Persephone Core es una escultura de 34 años que es patrimonio de la Fundación Soliris. Y desde entonces conozco el mensaje de Helen Calicot tan importante por los peligros de la energía nuclear. Y sí, tiene razón. Pero lo mismo que Perséfone fue rescatada del mundo subterráneo y de Plutón, la humanidad tiene la capacidad de superar y transmutar la radioactividad cuando consiga unir nuestra mente prodigiosa con nuestro corazón. Aquí veis a Core, a Perséfone, como reflejada en un espejo, pero tiene más cara de terror. Pero veréis en las fotos que cuando la vemos sin ser reflejada en el espejo tiene cara de niña. Y tiene además tres caras. Cuando sucedió el primer accidente nuclear en Three Mile Island, en Harrisburg, Pensilvania, yo estaba en Estados Unidos. Conocí a la doctora Helen Caldicott porque utilizamos sus palabras en un performance ritual, el oráculo. Esta escultura ha viajado conmigo a todas partes en el avión, desde Estados Unidos a España. Este ritual se ha hecho en montones de galerías de arte en Nueva York, en California, en Colorado, en Denver, en Boulder, también en España en galerías y en rallies antinucleares y por última vez en 1985 en el Círculo de Bellas Artes en Madrid. Era como una tragedia griega y las advertencias de las mujeres y la voz de Helen Caldicott nos hablaban de los peligros de la energía nuclear. Esta escultura representa la transmutación del ser humano y su conciencia para poder incorporarla a nuestra sangre. Han pasado muchos años y ahora, por no haber hecho nada, nos encontramos con un desastre de magnitudes insospechadas en nuestras manos. Now, when you fish in uranium, 200 new elements have formed, all of which are much more poisonous to the body than the original uranium. Although uranium is pretty poisonous. America used it in Fallujah and Baghdad and in Fallujah 80% of the babies being born are grossly deformed. They're being born without brains, single eyes, no arms. The doctors have told the women to stop having babies. The incidence of childhood cancer has gone up about 12 times. This is genocide, it's a nuclear war being conducted in Iraq. But uranium that they're using lasts for more than 4.5 billion years. So we're contaminating the cradle of civilization, the coalition of the willing. In the nuclear power plants, however, is a huge amount of radiation, 200 elements. Some last seconds, some last millions of years. Radioactive iodine lasts six weeks. It causes thyroid cancer. That's why people are saying, Better take potassium iodide because that blocks the thyroid uptake of radioactive iodine, which later can cause thyroid cancer. In Chernobyl, over 20,000 people have developed thyroid cancer. They have to have their thyroids out and they will die unless they take thyroid replacement every day, like a diabetic has to take insulin. Strontium 90 will get out, it lasts for 600 years. It goes to the bone where it causes bone cancer or leukemia. Cesium lasts for 600 years. It's all over Europe. 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Turkish food is extremely radioactive. Do not buy Turkish dried apricots. Do not buy Turkish hazelnuts or dried... Uh, the Turks were so cross with the Russians, they sent all their radioactive tea over to Russia after Chernobyl. But 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Farms in Britain, their lambs are so full of cesium they can't sell them. Don't eat 
European food. But that's nothing compared to what's happening now. One of the most deadly is plutonium, named after Pluto, god of the underworld. One millionth of a gram, if you inhale it, will give you cancer. Hypothetically, one pound, if evenly distributed, could give everyone on Earth cancer. Each reactor has 250 kilos of plutonium in it, kilograms. You only need 2.5 kilograms to make a bomb because plutonium is what they make bombs with. So any country that has a reactor, from your uranium, you are the biggest exporters of uranium in the world, Cameco. Canada sells two things. It sells wheat for life and uranium for death. Right? Plutonium is going to get out and spread all over the Northern Hemisphere and it's already heading towards North America now. Plus, radioactive iodine 129, its half-life is 17 million years, plus strontium, plus cesium, plus tritium, and I could go on and on and on. When it rains, down comes fallout. And it concentrates in food. If it gets into the sea, the algae concentrated hundreds of times, then the crustaceans concentrated hundreds of times, then the little fish, then the big fish, then us. Because we stand on the apex of the food chain. You can't taste these radioactive elements, you can't see them, and you can't smell them. They're silent. When you get them inside your body, you don't suddenly drop dead of cancer. It takes five to 60 years to get your cancer. And when the cancer, if you feel a lump in your breast, doesn't say, I was made by some strontium 90 U8 in a piece of fish 20 years ago. All radiation is damaging. It's cumulative. Each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. With americium, that's more dangerous than plutonium. I mean, I could go on and on. Depends if it rains, if you're going to get it or not. Um, if the, it rains and the radiation comes down, don't grow food, don't eat the food, and I mean don't eat it for 600 years. The radioactive waste from nuclear power is going to be buried, I, I hear, just like le next to Lake Ontario. It's going to leak, last for millions of years, it's going to get into the water, into the food chains. Radioactive waste will induce epidemics of cancer, leukemia, and genetic disease for the rest of time. This is the greatest public health hazard the world has ever witnessed apart from the threat every day of nuclear war. We are now in a situation where we have harnessed the energy of the sun. It is totally out of control and there's simply nothing we can do. Lo primero que tenemos que hacer es recuperar el sistema inmune de cuando éramos bebés porque lo perdemos cuando empezamos a hablar. Sabemos que el hueso yoides que se coloca encima de la laringe tiene que ver con las tensiones del glándula timo que se pierde. Y cada vez que tenemos emociones que no podemos aguantar, que no podemos entender, que no podemos asimilar, se nos colapsa, no podemos hablar, nos atragantamos, porque estamos perdiendo el sistema inmune más cada vez que nos sucede esto. Por lo tanto, si la glándula del timo y el corazón depende el amor, pues enamórate de ti mismo, enamórate de tu casa, enamórate de tu trabajo, enamórate de un amigo, de una amiga, enamórate de tu gato, de tu perro, enamórate de la vida. Ten entusiasmo para vivir. Si no, no vamos a recuperar el sistema inmune de cuando amor ves. Además, las tormentas solares nos van a beneficiar porque tienen un montón de ultravioleta y ultravioleta es lo que limpia toda la atmósfera y además también es el dador de vida. Desde que nos escondemos del sol tenemos más cáncer y esto es un error. El sol es nuestro aliado y podremos ver que no hace falta mirar al sol al amanecer o al atardecer que podríamos simplemente con llevar sombrero y recibir los ojos sin gafas de sol, la fotofobia es nuestro enemigo. Tenemos que aguantar la luz intensa simplemente debajo de un sombrero. ¿Eh? Entonces podremos recuperar el sistema inmune de cuando éramos bebés y veréis que tenemos nuevas terapias. Os lo digo porque yo he sido víctima 
de radioactividad. He tenido leucemia, ya lo he conseguido superar. Y estoy mejor que antes, los médicos no entienden nada. He recuperado el timo. He recuperado mi vida. Y si yo lo he conseguido, vosotros lo conseguiréis también. No hace falta que os dé de detalles de mi recuperación, porque tenéis otros vídeos ahí sobre la glándula timo y la recuperación de leucemia. Si yo lo he conseguido, vosotros también lo conseguiréis. La luz ultravioleta, el circulatorio y el estrés. Tampoco podremos tomar tanto sol como antes debido a las tormentas solares que tienen mucho ultravioleta. Tendremos que protegernos con sombrero, pero sin gafas de sol. Y si enfermas, nunca pongas tu vida en manos de otra persona, en manos de los médicos. Entérate de todo. Decide por ti mismo. Tú eres el único que puedes conocerte a ti mismo. No pongas tu vida en manos de nadie. Necesitas toda tu capacidad para sanarte. This is the secret that saved Stalingrad from the Germans for the Russians during World War II. I'm sure many of you remember that in 1943, the German army laid siege to Stalingrad during World War II and kept the end withdrawn. And that blood passes through a special tubing in, through a special chamber, blood cells themselves, take on special qualities and their immune abilities are increased and they become like little Pac-Men that go around the body and, and help the body destroy germs. Well, think of everything that can be solved with this process. I mean, we use it in our office all the time for the common cold. It's great for combating viruses. It's great for combating influenza. It combats hepatitis. It combats All of the viral infections, Lyme disease is treated, Valley fever is treated, chronic hepatitis is treated, uh, and just when the body needs even a special antioxidant, lowering the level of germs in the body is a great advantage so that the immune system can do its other things and help protect the body. Now what we usually do after we do the 50 cc's of blood exchange, uh, and it's the patient's own blood, and it's only out of their body for several minutes, and it goes right back in. It's not exposed to the air. It's not exposed to any contaminating substances, and the entire procedure is totally sterile. After we do this blood exchange, we then attach one of our IVs, and uh, the, uh, the most common one we attach is vitamin C. Most people don't know this, But vitamin C, when it gets intracellular, metabolizes to hydrogen peroxide. Some people actually use hydrogen peroxide IVs, but very high dose vitamin C achieves the same purpose and gets the patient through the process better.